Sport. Let's get the final thoughts of our broadcast team, Ian Eagle and Sarah Kustak. Chris, the frustration for this Nets team, the fact that this regular season was such a struggle, they got to the playoffs after winning the play-in, and the hope was that some of those troubles would go away. They haven't. If anything, it's been more apparent, and certainly against a team like Boston that has sensational chemistry and a connectivity that the Nets have been aspiring to throughout the season. And I think we've seen a lot of the same things from game one to game two to here in game three. And um, you can't just assume that because you change environment and get back to your home court and your home crowd, that that necessarily changes the play and the strategy and the approach on the floor. And the Celtics had just such a great level of confidence throughout, a composure. Anytime the Nets made some runs, they were able yeah. to respond in kind and doing so at both ends of the floor. The defensive prowess, their ability to really protect the paint but also get out on the perimeter make it a challenge and um, you know tough for Kevin Durant to get any clean looks to do those type of things where he could get going but it, it was across the board and, and they also for Brooklyn couldn't get stops against yep. the Celtics team especially when needed and overall there's a lot of different numbers you could look at but the big one points off turnovers to think about the fact that Boston had what was it 37 points off turnovers just shows an attention to detail that wasn't there for the Nets when Kevin Durant went 0 of 10 in the second half against the Boston Celtics in game two the conversation throughout the NBA pundits fans media people connected to the league was well Kevin Durant is just going to go off in game three he will be a focused man, a man on a mission. He'll go to the free throw line 25 times. This was part of the scuttlebutt. None of that occurred. And there were times where he just didn't look like himself, whether it's just been all the minutes accumulated or the way Boston has got into him defensively and caused him problems providing that wall. And there's no doubt that this is not the Kevin Durant that we've seen that was so dominant throughout the season when he was healthy. I think it's a combination of both of those things. And once you look at the accumulation of the minutes, latter part of the season, trying to even make it into the playoffs, yep. get the play in game, plays 46 minutes here tonight. Boston's defense, the fact that they can throw different looks, different coverages with a, a whole lineup of players that can also individually yep. match up against him with a toughness, with a strength, length, and, and quickness. And overall, too, I think what I'd love to see in game four, and mentioned this through the broadcast, find different ways to try and free up Durant, make it a little bit easier for him, where you're giving it to him, not just to, giving it to him to work in isolation, against a player and against a wall of other readers and a, a second chance, um, a second player that's yeah. going to be running at him. And so that's where I'm curious to see if, if there's an opportunity for more movement, more actions by all players involved with the spacing on the floor. Because the way that Boston switches, it, it, it invites isolation and invites you to go to one-on-one -on -one and it can stagnate the movement of the basketball. But that is the one way that Brooklyn can try and get their offense going, try and get Durant into more of a rhythm because so many of their baskets and their point came in the open court and on the fast break, it's been a real big challenge when they have to play against that half-court defense of the Celtics. And we know what it's been like in the NBA. No team has ever come back from an 0-3 deficit. So at this point, it's, it's not even a topic to talk about winning the series. The only topic is, can you win a game? Uh, can you provide the pride necessary at home to keep this series going and to force a game five to go back to Boston? Uh, that's going to be the topic of conversation. Go out, win a game and then worry about what's next after that. Yeah, and that's a part of the series. That's a part of the postseason. It's a part of pride, and you said it. When you yeah. say pride, personal pride, these are superstar players in Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. These are the rest of the, the complimentary players, prideful players, a lot of playoff experience. What adjustments will be made? Will we see more of Blake Griffin, who provided a, a big boost, a big energy? Um, what different ways you could look at it? Will Ben Simmons, as it's on track and the trajectory of it, to see him make an appearance in game four? Does yeah. anything change with that given how this series sits so there's a, a lot of things to look at but to your point it, it is about one game and it's about getting a win because that's something that matters in the context of what these players have tried to do through the course of this season and to extend their season give a lot of credit to the Boston Celtics uh, they have looked like a very determined group and a team that very easily could make a run towards the NBA finals right now the topic will be just winning this series against Brooklyn and the Nets trying to keep it alive with game four Monday night. Back to you, Chris and Frank.